I've had a lot of questions about the Asus Zephyrus G14 2021 versus 2022. The biggest differences, of course, are going to be the latest iteration of the AMD CPU, but the biggest difference is going to be the NVIDIA GPU versus the AMD GPU. So according to the specs, last year I reviewed the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 9 5900HS and RTX 3060 GPU. And this year I reviewed the Ryzen 9 6900HS and the RX 6700S. Looking at the simulated benchmark charts, it didn't show that much promise for increase in performance compared from last year to this year. As you can see in Cinebench R20, we only had about 500 points increase in performance, even less in Cinebench R23 single core performance, only increasing by about 100 points, but then we saw substantially more increase in performance as we got into the multi-core. So if you're somebody who's using a laptop for a lot of multitasking, let's say you're doing some work in Photoshop, you're running some music, you're doing some web browsing, and then you're waiting for a video to export out of Premiere Pro, you're going to benefit from the newer 6900HS with slightly better multitasking. Let's move into some real world benchmarks now and check out Autodesk 3ds Max. So as you can see, compared the 191 of the latest Asus Zephyrus G14 compared to last year's model of 156, now we're seeing about a 30 point plus increase in performance. Now as we move on to Autodesk Maya, we're seeing more substantial increase in performance by about 50 points. So that eight gigs of VRAM and the AMD Smart Shift Max is definitely giving us more performance having both an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU inside of the laptop. So giving you a big benefit there in Autodesk Maya. As we move on to PTC Creo, the gap continues to increase. And then in SolidWorks, it's not even a competition. If you're a SolidWorks user, it would definitely push you toward the latest G14. As we're seeing 163 points in SolidWorks versus the 87 points out of last year's model in SolidWorks. Now, as we move into the Puget Systems After Effects benchmark, we saw a slight increase in performance, but nothing substantial. However, as we move towards video editing, we saw similar performance, but higher thermal temperatures. Now, this was slightly concerning for me because I thought, wow, they did such a good job last year with thermals. Why are we seeing this increase in thermal temperatures? Now, that's mainly due to the GPU. We see a higher thermal power limit in the newer GPU from AMD than we did in the RTX GPU from NVIDIA. So if you're somebody who wants that slight kick in performance, then I would push you towards the newer laptop. However, you're gonna get a cooler laptop last year, but they're both gonna be about the same noise level. They're both gonna be around the 48 to 52 decibels of fan noise at the highest level of pushing your laptop to the max. They've increased the power limit and they've also added the new vapor chamber, which allows them to increase the power limit and still keep the thermals at a reasonable place and have good fan noise. So you're getting more performance, more power pushing through the laptop, but similar thermals and fan noise. However, they are slightly higher than last year's. They're pushing more performance, so it's pretty impressive they can still keep the temperatures cool. Now, as we get into Photoshop, you can see on the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmark that the increase in performance was quite substantial in this benchmark specifically. We saw over 130 points with an increase in performance. Now, keep in mind, an 804 from last year's model to a 939 in this year's model you may not actually see that performance difference on the day-to-day -day while you're using Photoshop. However, if you don't want to, you want to come up to a guy with last year's G14 and flex and say, hey, got 130 points more performance than you do in Photoshop benchmark, then you know, you'll be able to do that. But honestly, as a day-to-day -day user, I don't think you're going to really see that difference. Now, we've not even discussed the actual features or build of the laptop yet. So let's get into that now. One of the biggest and most substantial and most important aspects of this laptop changing to me is going to be the trackpad. That larger trackpad is fantastic for video editors and creators. If you want to be on the go friendly, you don't want to bring a mouse, that larger, higher quality glass trackpad is fantastic. The second most important thing for me personally is the 14 inch screen. I think this really makes or breaks this laptop. I've been using a 13 inch screen um, quite a bit for my on the go laptop and it just, it leaves me wanting for more screen because I just, that taller aspect ratio is so helpful for on the go video editing, Photoshop work, and even just like working in Google Docs so I can see like more of what I'm writing. Uh, just more, have more of the concept of like what I'm doing in my workflow. So I would say that larger 16 by 10 aspect ratio is a clear winner for me. Now, uh, another thing of course is the webcam. I do a lot of virtual meetings, whether in my day job or talking to brands or just, you know, communicating with friends overseas. 
Shout out to Tech Notice. Um, and so it just seems like that is just so essential. I don't wanna carry a separate webcam along with me and click it onto the top of my laptop. I like that it's just there. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. Gave us a 720p webcam. Though we do have a webcam, it's still 720p. Not exactly stoked about that, but I am stoked that they have a webcam. It actually looks pretty good. I mean, about as good as a 720p can look. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability between last year's model and this year's model, I know Best Buy has been doing some great discounts. You can head down in the description below and click one of those links. If you do make a purchase of that link, of course, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Color gamut range is great. Both have 100% sRGB. You can get down to 99% if you don't have it correctly calibrated uh, with a color calibrator. Um, but overall, it has great color gamut range. Now, another thing though about the new screen is that it's brighter. It's gonna be a brighter screen than last year. So that's gonna really stand out to you if you're somebody who finds yourself in coffee shops, maybe sitting outside. Um, if you're somebody who works indoors a lot, that really won't matter too much, but it's gonna have over 100 nits of a brighter screen with the new panel compared to last year's model. The keyboard is slightly refined as well. We now have that top cover that's all white magnesium alloy compared to last year, which is that silver two-tone. I thought it was kind of weird. I'm glad they just went all white. And they put kind of this like iridescence on the keycaps as well, which is kind of neat. They have a nicer tactile feel than they did the last year's silver keys. So I think it's a better typing experience. And they also moved the speakers up on the keyboard deck. Now I'm gonna do an audio sample between each of the laptops so you can hear kind of the differences. Keep in mind, I'm not sure if I use this same audio clip, so please forgive me. I'm trying to make those all even. In the past, I used different audio clips and I totally realized why that annoyed you guys and I understand. So if I don't have that same audio clip, please forgive me. I don't have that laptop in the studio anymore, but um, you can hear maybe the audio differences having the speakers moved up on the keyboard deck rather than having them down kind of below your palms. For the weight and thickness, they're the exact same weight, exact same form factor. They were just able to fit a larger screen by making a thinner, lower bezel. So the bottom of your screen is a smaller bezel, which gives you that extra half inch of screen. Now, battery life is something that actually slightly improved on the 6900 HS uh, and that, you know, Smart Shift Max from AMD. So if you want slightly better battery life, then I would go with a new model. You can see the battery life results coming up on the screen now. For the upgrade path, they both have one swappable M.2 slot and they have one swappable for the upgrade path, they both have one swappable M.2 slot and they both have one RAM slot that can be swapped. So the upgrade path is a little less than uh, amazing compared to some other gaming laptops, but there still is some customization, which is great. So overall, punch for punch, which one should you buy? If you're somebody who's looking for a webcam, a larger trackpad and a larger screen, then it's obvious, get the newer G14. If you're somebody who is like, ah, I can live without those and I still wanna get some great performance, then the year before, 2021, is still gonna be a great laptop. You're gonna be able to get you know, an on-sale deal. I'll put links in the description below if you wanna check the exact pricing between the two models. Um, I've seen some great sales on the older G14s and they, they're 80% you know, of the latest G14. I, I really think that. I just think there's a few refinements that took place in the newer G14 that would personally lead me to buy it because I value the things that it's been upgraded with. Otherwise, likes that this video has brought you some value and subs if you want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.